Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. I hope everyone's doing well today. I'm taking a quick look at a keyboard that I found on Amazon for 1979 or 1997, one of the two. Anyway, under $20. It normally lists for $29.97, but of course, uh, one of our Redditors on uh, the subreddit Budget Keeps. If you haven't been there, come by, take a look. We're a friendly place for newcomers and experienced users alike, and we don't have a minimum or maximum budget. Everyone's budget is different. So by budget keyboards, we do not only mean cheap, we mean budget based on your budget. Anyway, we have quite a number of Redditors. Um, I hate to just point one out, but uh, especially my name is Anthony, um, is one of many Redditors that are on the ball, keeping their eyes out for some great deals. Now, some sharp-eyed Redditor said that this is very likely a rebranded CIYX79, a uh, three-mode, 65% keyboard that usually sells for around 50 bucks. So again, this was uh, on sale. I got it for 1997 the other day, and when I first got it, I was, this is what I heard when I got the box. I haven't opened it yet. It sounds like keycaps, right? And then I looked a little closer on the ad and it appears to have both black and white keys. I don't know. Let's find out. But if it does for $20, wireless? I mean, honestly, 2022 has been the year for keyboards. The, the hobby is booming. We've got a lot more choices. And the choices we do have are much more budget conscious. I mean, I remember, I mean, I have RK84, EP84, RK68, RK61, all of those. All of those I paid 60, 70, 80 dollars plus a year ago. And nowadays, the choices that we have, and every day I see a new keyboard being announced. So I'm excited to take a look at this one. Uh, but real quick, I wanted to, uh, any of the folks that, um, are part of our budget keeps. I know a lot of you guys come and check out my videos and I do appreciate that. Uh, we're getting ready to hit our one year anniversary. I still am trying to plan. I've got a whole bunch of things going on, uh, and, but I'm trying to plan to at least to do something. Um, I'm trying to come up with a way to provide giveaways, but for members of the community that are very helpful and uh, that share a lot and they're always there to help. Uh, don't get me wrong, I like random contests, but at the same time, why not, you know, help out those that, you know, maybe couldn't afford something better and are always there to help. I don't know. I'm still figuring out. If any of you guys have any ideas, please let me know. I'm bad mark on our budget keeps. Anyway, so let's take a look at this and see if we do actually have a an extra set of keycaps because um, though, I mean, there are some Akos and I believe some Epo makers that will come, you know, a lot of keyboards that come preloaded may come with some novelty keys and maybe a couple of additional keys. But I mean, even Akko doesn't include their entire keycap set or in two colorways so got this sticker off oh and this is a i guess i should mention the model it's a klim shift 65 percent uh, it has a u.s flag on there but i doubt it was manufactured here we'll see maybe it was assembled here i don't know but i'm curious to see what we've got dun, dun, dun. all right box is a little messy set this aside for a second we know that's the keyboard and looks like i was right all right what do we got in the box we have okay it looks like i ordered brown which i'll either usually get brown or uh blues and these are jixian so these are Jixian switches, not Otemu, but just about uh, the same 
line for OEMs. It has a nice manual um, that comes actually in a baggie. That's new. Has a uh, quick options card. I don't know why it's so beat up. Yeah, this case looks like it got really damaged. Um, so yeah, so we've got the manual. We've got a really beat up uh, quick start guide. Ooh, the clavier. Sorry, my French is rusty. Oh, and so is my German. But there's the US layout. Shortcut reference keys. And then, this is what I was hearing. Oh, look, look we've got another card here. Um, basically just telling you, oh, spare set of white keycaps. Yes, and I was correct. Because that, that, that's a, my wife was like, I thought you ordered a keyboard. This sounds like it's a box of keycaps. And well, she was right. We've got an extra set of white keycaps for this 65%. This is a first. I have not seen this in any other keyboard. Um, so besides the uh, plastic, come on guys, manufacturers, please stop putting these plastic keycap poolers. All they're gonna do is damage your keycaps, especially when you have these cheap keycaps. Just, just put in the metal wire pullers. Um, and these switch pullers, they're torturous. So, Anyway, it's always nice when you throw a couple of switches in. Who knows, if you go to, you know, lube them, you could mess up one leaf spring and, you know, that's that. Although, I used to be like, every switch has to be the same exact switch on a keyboard. Like, it was almost OCD, but now I've learned to live with, like, especially keys that I hardly use or slapping in a, I actually find it fun to slap in a, a clicky um, on the, uh, caps locks as I hardly ever use caps locks um, just to be like oh wait a minute I hit caps locks because that'll definitely um, jar me so it has a nice rubberized um, uh, USB cable with a mentometer and of course what we saw here the manual I'm not going to get into that right now but let's go ahead and see the keyboard all right put all this stuff away and um, again I'm still kind of I, I am impressed 20 bucks and I get, I mean, obviously these are cheap shine through caps. I don't expect much from them, but to actually have options out of the box, that's going to, in my opinion, I think that's going to be seen as a positive, especially for a lot of people starting to get into the hobby because they're gonna be like, oh, let me switch it out. So they'll start to catch the bug of, you know, being able to change their look. Um, you know, while this hobby is, yes, about performance in a lot of ways, but it's also about aesthetics and you can't really argue that when people sometimes spend more money on a USB-C cable than they do on an entire kit. But, like I said, that's, I mean, that's what you like. If you're happy. Go for it. All right, so what do we've got here? We have a 65%. Yeah, this is definitely the X79. I can tell because of the 2.4, although the 2.4 and the X79 did not come with a piece of tape. This one is actually taped. Nice little touch. Um, it has a very similar back as the RKG68 and uh, the LTC Nimble back. Um, I, I gotta say they're probably, um, and they actually have these same little spots, but they're filled in. So I'm gonna assume they're probably the same manufacturer. Now, looking at it, it's actually got a decent weight. I believe the battery in this is either two or 3,000 milliamp hours. Um, and the box specifies that it is a two, thousand milliamp hour battery so i'm not much for using uh wireless so it's no big deal to me i actually if i have an option i choose not wireless why because the more wireless keyboards you have stored or just laying around the more chances of a spicy pillow and if you don't know what a spicy pillow is it's when a battery begins to fill up with gases and it actually expands to the point that if it's even touched or punctured it just start shooting fires fire out of it so anyway we've got a little bit of logo here which could probably yeah it does feel like the heat transfer so it should be able to be removed easily with non-acetone um, nail polish remover now here's another thing that I, I i guess i mean i'm i'm a big fan of shrouds this is magnetic we see that it has six magnets three along the top three along the bottom so it gives you the ability so this keyboard Though, I mean, the keycaps may not be the best, gives you the ability right off the bat to change looks almost on the fly. I like that white bezel. That, that, that border is, is nice. And then, you know, you've now got the floating key design. I am honestly impressed 
for 20 bucks, this is not a bad deal at all. I mean, it really just truly isn't. Let's go ahead and turn it on. All right. The RGB, it's there. It's not the brightest. I've definitely seen brightest, but it's not the dimmest either. And see, so yeah, it is up, up at full, or full brightness. It has the full complement of effects. Now let's take a look at these keys real quick. If I'm not mistaken, oh yeah, I don't, I don't think I even need to pull out the caliper for this. See, see how I can bend it. This is less than a millimeter. Look at that. Man can literally bend the cap out of shape. So these are <laughs> cheap. You should not be able to uh, bend the plastic. I mean, I could probably break it if I spent enough time on it. That's that's not very good. Um, again, uh, keeping in mind, $20 keyboard. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, for the stabilizers. Now. I've seen these white ones before, and they're usually not that good stock, but with a little tuning, I've actually been surprised and have gotten a good... Um, I, I haven't had to replace these these all-white ones. I don't know if they're all the same, but I've had pretty good luck with these anyway. So, taking a look here. Now, we obviously have a steel plate, um, but these stabilizers are lubed. They do have a little bit of lube on there, and if we go ahead and check. Oh, they are nice and firm, nice and tight on that plate. They don't seem to be loose at all. So let me take a look at a couple more. But yeah, these keys, I mean, see, you shouldn't be able to bend keycaps with your fingers. So these are definitely keycaps that have to go. Um, again, these stabilizers are nicely attached. So eh, a little loose there, but I've seen much worse. So, so far pleased with the, the stabilizers. But I gotta say, I do like the look. Um, that black and white, the fact that I can go ahead and switch out the keycaps. Again, I am going to put some aftermarket keycaps on it because these caps are just not my bag. But, so these come with, like I said, the Jixian Browns. They're not going to be lubed. I'm gonna assume they're going to be a little pingy. Now we do have, these are the, uh, these are actually five pin hot swap compatible. So we're not, we're not even dealing with Otemu hot swap sockets. We can literally put kale creams in here if we want. Um, this is going to be compatible with 99% of switches. So I, I this is <laughs> this is a pretty good deal. Now I can see though from here. Uh, wait a minute. Let me pull up another key. Maybe I'm just at the wrong spot. I'm curious if there's foam between the plate and the PCB. Nope, there is not. All right, so that's obviously one thing for the mod list. And just another, oh no, never mind. For a second, I thought that the uh, LED was raised, but it's actually not. It's flush with the PCB. It's just the shape of it. Kind of looks like it's domed, but it's not. So it will work with any switch. Um, I recently came across a board that uh, that had that, and it's like, I mean, only SMD. It's like you got five pins, but then you have an LED that's sticking up 1.5 millimeter above. So unless I make a hole in each switch, if I'm using switches that don't have window, I mean, I, I don't know. I guess I just don't get the sense behind that. Uh, they were probably just trying to get rid of old inventory. So, all right. So overall, I gotta say, I'm I'm liking this board. Looks like it has a roughly 
three degree angle with uh yeah because it oh no it does have two set of feet wow that goes up to around five and this one i would guess oh that one looks like it's seven so you actually have three angles to choose from which is nice most of these cheaper boards um, only have one pair of legs uh, to have two pair of legs and have three typing angles is another plus so so far it looks like we've got a lot of functionality um the extra keycaps though they are kind of crap honestly i would have paid the same without keycaps and switches uh I mean, don't get me wrong, I can reuse the, the browns. I've been having a lot of fun making cream rons lately, uh, which sounds lovely. But the keycaps I won't use. But the switches I can use, but I'm probably going to replace these. And I'm going to mod it. I am so looking forward to modding this because it's one thing I dealt with a, uh, I don't even have it in here, with a keyboard the other day, 65%. Um, if you did this, if you pulled out the feet, let me pull out the same feet, <laughs> and you pushed on it, the feet would fold. Uh, did not come with extra key caps, and it was $99. Three bucks. And it was low profile, but used regular size switches. So, don't allow yourself to be taken in by these companies that for some reason they think they can still charge five times the price of something that is better than what they're trying to sell. A lot of companies are trying to get rid of old inventory. They may be marking it as a different name or you know doing whatever kind of special, but just keep an eye out. Nowadays, there are a lot of good options for the price. So anyway, what we've got here is a, a lovely 65% uh, remote kit that comes with a detachable shroud it comes with a pocket for your 2.4 gigahertz dongle it comes with three different typing angles um, and it comes with an extra set of uh, white switches which allows you like i said to change the look if you're just going to stay with it. i think it's a good way to get people at least interested in changing the look of the keyboards changing just a couple of them it's the first steps <laughs> into getting into this hobby so marketing i get on this product this is that definitely something i would recommend for beginners because they got the hot swap functionality they can start getting an idea of what they like maybe buy you know some sample switch packs and put them in there to try to figure out exactly what they want but i'm going to be coming back to this board and i'm going to be modding it so right now i'm going to do a sound test i'm actually going to I noticed with the, the CIY X77, which also has a magnetic shroud, uh, though it's a TKL, it has a slightly different um, resonance or temper when doing a sound test with or without the shroud. So being that this is the same brand and has that magnetic shroud, I'm going to do a, a sound test with and a sound test without. And I'll leave you guys with that for right now. I'll be coming back later to this keyboard to do some mods to it. I'm thinking silicone pour, Tempest tape mod, um, PE foam mod, and I'm going to plumber's tape the uh, stabilizers as well as tune them. If you guys think of anything else that I might, if you want me to take a look at anything while I'm in there, I'm also going to be taking a look at software at that point. That's I've been making it a, a point. I'm going to start looking at software more and more. Uh, I, I run Linux, so I hardly ever use the software. I try to, you know, stick with keyboards that have for the most, the majority of the functionality on the keyboard, or I plug it into a Windows VM program and how I want it. And then, you know, just go from there. But for right now, I'm going to leave you guys with a sound test with and a sound test without the shroud of this Klim Shift with um, Egyptian brown switches stock and um, see what you guys think of it. And until the next transmission, keep calm, keyboard on.